Uh, this report is focused on uh, inverted F antennas, uh, group number is B21. And I'm going to go through uh, how we built an uh, IFA antenna uh, in OpenEMS. Um, we used a, a code that uh, we found, and we, we're going to explain our findings um, in the report. So the first, the first part is what is OpenEMS? Why are we even using uh, OpenEMS? OpenEMS is an electromagnetic field solver. Um, we have to use MATLAB uh, for the OpenEMS code to work. It uses a 3D plane and uh, cylindrical coordinates. Um, uses a open source platform. It's known as the finite difference time domain, and we will be talking about that later. It helps solve um, some of the uh, electric field formulas and go through those. Um, we use Maxwell equations, um, and they're they're used in engineering and science, as always. And Open EMS is a very good tool to uh, to go through that. Most of the most of the findings in the report will be uh, numerical approximations, and they're done through simulations. And we're going to be going through a wide range of uh, frequencies um, in a single simulation, and show you how each frequency, um, what happens to the antenna, and what happens to the um, wave, electromagnetic wave from the antenna. I'm going to talk about how the electric far field graph was made and the F. DTD method. Our MATLAB code utilizes the finite difference time domain method in order to determine the radiated ENH fields from the antenna at every point in space with, within a computational domain. The computational domain is simply the physical region over which the simulation will be performed. The setup of the parameters and the excitation function is necessary. First, it is initialized and the Gauss is used to excite the antenna within a, with, with a given center frequency and corner frequency. The figure shows how the uh, setting up of the parameters are done. Right here. Then the antenna is excited at the parameters are set. This part of the code is tricky. The below diagram shows the shows how to apply the excitation. Yeah. Um, FTTD has a property to providing animated displays of the electromagnetic field movement through the model. First, the FDTD calculates the ENH field everywhere in the computational domain as time passes. All right, so this is a electric far field graph of our inverted F antenna. As you can see, it is uh, kind of omnidirectional, and that is one of the important properties. It is being um, depicted at a frequency of 2.4 megahertz. Uh, the time step represents the whole frequency domain, which is divided into smaller time intervals. Each interval, the speed and energy level are depicted. As you can see from the graph, the energy first increases and then starts to decrease. Uh, this is due to the energy level increase when the energy is accumulating within the antenna. And as the energy starts to leave the antenna, the energy level also decreases. Now we're going to talk about... One of the most important parts um, about the OpenEMS software is we're going to talk about how the CAD drawing was made in MATLAB. Um, and to get, an, to get an idea of what the measurements would be for the CAD drawing, we had a, a little diagram here. Um, we have the substrate width, uh, the thickness of the substrate, um, what the F antenna is going to look like, and different um, widths and sizes that we initialized uh, at the bottom right here. So we we kept the we kept the sizes. Um, each size does matter um, in terms of what your operating frequency will be, uh, in terms of how the energy will dissipate through the antenna, how current and um, the electric field will behave. Each these are what, some of the most important parameters for the antenna. Um, things like what the feed element is. Uh, things like how uh, the distance to the edge of the antenna, the size of the antenna, the length. Um, how how are we going to mesh the antenna um, and the height of the this small stub right here, right this the feed point right here. Um, these are all very important uh, things that really show how the antenna will operate. So to do this, we used um, the MATLAB software. And in in MATLAB, you see I'm, I've I've opened up the screen, um, and there's this there's a software called Open. Uh, 
CXS CAD. Um, this is a feature of OpenEMS, and this is done by activating the feature. First, we open up the even window. We open, we set the size of the simulation box, uh, and we let simbox substrate dot width. Uh, we set this as a parameter to show how big our simulation box will be. After setting up the geometry, um, before we set up the geometry, actually, after we set up the simulation box, we have our window open. We have to set up our x, y, and z axis. Um, we have to set up the mesh of how OpenEMS will make the 3D version of our antenna. This is done uh, on point number four, as you should see right here. Um, and then we have to open up the CSX screen uh, that opens up. And it's usually empty at first. And we have to pick a substrate for the antenna um, where the F antenna is placed on top of. And the following code below actually explains uh, the steps we took to make that happen and how we made our mesh, um, how we added cells to our mesh, how we figured out from where to where the, the program is going to simulate, um, what the substrate will be uh, using epsilon and kappa as some, some variables of what substrate will be in OpenEMS. Um, after creating the substrate, we did create a ground plate. And the, and the ground plate was really necessary. Um, it allows the functionality of the antenna. The, the ground plate is made by a certain a variety of functions in OpenEMS. These, these are, um, so we have to add a metal, uh, what kind of metal you're going to have for the ground plate. And that's a perfect electric conductor um, in an ideal conductor. And then we have how the um, ground plate will look in OpenEMS. Um, that's there's also some really important points. The the most important part then comes down to the shape of the inverted F antenna. This this really shows how uh, things like the feed element, um, the short circuit stub, radiate how the element how the uh, whole antenna will radiate. This is just shown in the this code below. This is a lot, there's a big piece of code right here that shows all of how we created the uh, inverted F antenna in um, the, the CAD software. So now let's just say, okay, we have our antenna, uh, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to open up MATLAB just to show you how that looks. This is this is the CAD CSX software. This is our antenna. We've created our ground plate, and we've made a mesh. You see all the boxes at the back. That's the mesh, and uh, this this shows how the thickness of our uh, antenna and how it looks in general. Now going back to the code, I want to show you how we made the mesh look smooth. We use this piece of code here um, to detect edges in the mesh to make the mesh smoother, to make the edge smoother, and um, this this piece of code actually explains how we did that. When when you finish all those initializations, you have to show the antenna itself in the MATLAB environment, and that's done by point number nine. Right? Then in the end, this is our finished F antenna, all simulated in, in uh, APP CSX CAD 3D software. I can move it around and get an idea of what it's going to look and how it's going to operate. This part of the code deals with near field to far field calculations. So first we input the theta range, which is from 0 to 180 with a tens of 2. And the phi range is from 0 to 2 pi, or in degrees, 360. Uh, in the actual NF2FF uh, calculations, we have to input certain parameters. One of them being the NF2FF, which is the near field to far field calculation. The sim path, where the file was made. Uh, f underscore res, which is simply the array of frequencies that have to be analyzed. And then the previously mentioned theta range, which is multiplied by pi divided by 80 to get into radians, and phi range, which is also multiplied by pi divided by 180 to get into radians. Last part is the verbose, which sets the level, which sets the verbose level for the NF2FF calculation, and the out file, which saves the results to an external file named 3D pattern.h5. So in the end, we just use the plot ff3d method to plot the normalized 3d far field pattern of our design. 
the next part of the code just displays the power and directivity. So it displays the radiated power, the directivity, and the efficiency. It uses num2str to turn the number into string so it can be easily printed. And these two lines here are simply for if we want to simulate the results in parity, which is not our problem. So I'm going to be talking about plotting the feed point impedance and reflection coefficient. So in this part of the MATLAB code for the inverted F antenna, we plot the feed point impedance and the S parameter S11, or more popularly known as the reflection coefficient. For effective radiation, we need the antenna to have its current or electric field add up in phase. This means that we need a feed point impedance of just about 50 ohms, which is the typical IFA standard. So thus, the capacitive, the capacitive and inductive characteristics of the EFA should cancel out at a specific resonant frequency of about uh, 2.4 MHz uh, for optimal antenna efficiency. So here we can see the MATLAB code that simply just plots the graph where we have the real part of the impedance and the imaginary part of the impedance and it has the line width and all that other cool stuff. So pl plotting the feed point impedance. Now once you see the graph, um, here's the real part and here's the imaginary part because it says in the um, legend there. So just notice that at the desired um, resistance of 50 ohms, we have our desired frequency of 2.4 megahertz, and the um, imaginary uh, impedance is approximately zero. Now let's move on into plotting the reflection coefficient. So uh, that's also known as the S parameter 1, 1. So here in the graph below that I'll show in a second, uh, we plot the reflection coefficient in decibels versus the frequency in megahertz. So as uh, the graph will show, at our desired frequency of about uh, 2.4 uh, megahertz, you can see that the reflection coefficient is at its maximum of uh, negative 30 decibels. So that means that, say, if you have um, um, 10 decibels of power put into the antenna, into the antenna, um, negative 20 would be radiated, so this would be negative 20, and then 10 um, would be, negative 10 would be um, stored in the antenna as losses, or absorbed or radiated as losses.